Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here, geographer and education manager on the S3 education team. In the other three presentations in this, in this series on teaching geography with ArcGIS Online, what I hoped I did was, first of all, inspired you to think about using geographic information systems and spatial analysis in your classroom. Secondly, I, I hope that I piqued your interest in using ArcGIS Online as a presentation tool for you and your students to use, but also as a tool to investigate local, community, regional, countrywide, and global issues with ArcGIS Online. I also hoped that uh, I made a strong case in terms of why and how to use GIS in the classroom. In this presentation, or actually a, what I hope to do here is a workshop in the use of geographic information systems in education, let's take one issue and look at it and investigate it. What I hope to do is model what you might do in the classroom. And in fact, you being the, the energetic, inspiring, creative educators that I know you are, you'll be able to do this and so much more in the classroom than time permits me to do here. Okay, so I'm starting with ArcGIS.com, ARCGIS.com, which is ArcGIS Online. In the search window for searching for content, let's look for World Bank Population. Now, the World Bank is a storehouse. Uh, one of the things that they do is they store data. They disseminate data. They gather and disseminate data. The first thing that opens up here is a whole series of results. I'm going to open that first one in ArcGIS.com uh, map viewer. So it draws my data set. What data set do I have? Well, let's show the map legend. Okay, great. What I have here is a annual population growth percentage. So I can see right away that I've got vast differences around the world. Right? I've got, for Libya, for example, I've got almost 4% growth in 1960. And as you can see, I can, I can get it over time. How do I do that? Well, I can slide this slider bar at the bottom. So some of these data sets inside ArcGIS Online are actually time enabled, which is fascinating because as you can see, now that I've, now that I've, I've put the, the far end to 2010, I've got this huge range, and not only a huge range, but I've got uh, vast differences, not only now, but Back then in, 19, in the 1960s, I had a different pattern entirely in the 1960s than I do now. So, for example, in the 1960s, I had this pattern. Okay, some of Europe was moderate in terms of uh, population growth. We had some missing data out here in China. But as we go forward in time, I can see that the pattern is different. Now I've got lower growth here in Russia, Eastern Europe, some Central Europe, and I've got some moderate growth in Africa. I've got some higher growth in selected countries. So data changed over time. Let's look at specific countries. So for example, if I click on Germany and look at the population growth over time, right? I've got 0.66 in 1960. And as you can see, it increased and then it decreased. And as I go forward, I've got some negatives. And let's go up to the 2000s here. Ah, so 2010 and 2009. 2010 is not available right now in this data set, but 2009, growth percentage negative. Why? What are the factors that go into increasing or decreasing uh, population growth in a country, in a region of a country, and so on? Let's take a look at Brazil. So this is the I part of GIS, when we pop up a data table. That's the information behind the G. So Brazil, twos and threes uh, through the 1970s and 1980s, as we scroll forward, we're getting into the ones now. So decreasing, but still historically uh, higher, less so now, less than 1% a year, but still higher than Germany. Okay, so why is that? Well, interesting. It's got to have something to do with birth rate, right? So if we look at the individual layers here, as you can see, I have more than just one layer. I don't just have population growth. I've got, for example, uh, females, males. I've got population percent over 64, and so on. What I've got here is something that will allow me to test my hypothesis. If my population growth is lower, then I would say that the birth rate is lower, correct? If the population growth is higher, then the birth rate should be higher. So let's just 
test out my hypothesis by clicking on annual births per thousand. Okay, in certain places that bears true. Is it, does it bear true everywhere around the world? So once again, I've got a whole time sequence of data that I can look at. Um, fascinating. So I can see that the birth rate in a place like Niger is in the 50s per thousand. Fairly steady. But what about Germany? We looked at that earlier in terms of the population growth. It was 17s. It was in the 16s. It was never 50-some as in Niger. So again, what are the reasons for that? How, how much is 50 or, or, or less than 10 uh, in terms of adding to the population? Looks like it's 8 per thousand uh, in 2008, the last year that the World Bank had data for uh, Germany. So fascinating. So we'll look at Brazil because we looked at it in terms of population growth and let's see what the what the births per thousand. So it was in the 40s, uh, at least in part of 19 in the 1960s, then it decreased into the 30s and 1970s. Let's scroll up to the 1980s. It was in the 20s and in the 2000s it got below 20 and it looks like the last year uh, it was available, which was 2008, was 16. So, okay, what's the relationship of birth rate to uh, something like life expectancy and population growth? Well, let's look at life expectancy here. And we've got total, we've also got males and females. So let's just take a look at uh, life expectancy. Okay, we've got a huge range, right? Because for one thing, we're, we're looking at 1960 to 2010. And uh, while I'd like to believe that every place increased, let's just take a look uh, more closely here. Uh, 69 years back in 1960 for Germany. And as we scroll forward, 70s, did it get to be 80? Let's just... Looks like it hit 80 in 2008. Okay, let's take a look at another country and see what the life expectancy is. Did it increase at a uniform rate? Did it increase at all in every country around the world? So here's Zambia, uh, and it was in the 40s. So let's see if it increased. Uh, we're increasing into the 50s in the 1970s. And then, unfortunately, it's back in the 40s again uh, into the current time. So, okay, well, what does that mean? What are the factors involved with uh, life expectancy? You know, what's going on in different countries around the world? You know, is it, it, what, what brings down the life expectancy? And there's a whole host of factors you can talk about and investigate, right? There's, uh, there's, and these are pretty grim topics, but they're, they have to do with uh, disease, genocide, um, as human health, sanitation, uh, and education, and lots of other things that go into various factors, uh, including these variables that we're looking at right now. So, okay, with just a few clicks, we were able to ask a, a geographic question, start investigating some data, and using ArcGIS Online as the tool to uh, foster our, our investigation. I think that this tool is uh, really quite versatile. Uh, we're looking at world data here, um, but if you've got data and there are lots of data sets out here in ArcGIS Online for sub-administrative uh, units of countries. You can start investigating some of these things uh, on a sub-country level. You could also do this for points, for example, cities and city growth. How did we do that? Well, we started with ArcGIS Online and we added uh, one actual uh, layer, which was the World Bank population. It turned out to be about eight or nine different variables inside that layer. And what's more, you can save this map, you can share this map with other people, or you can just go out on RTS online and pull it back up. No software required, you're working with a web browser, and you can ask a series of questions, really dig into inquiry, and investigating real-world issues. Thanks!